Hello friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. In today's video, we are going to see about the second part of our model review series that is 60% model review procedure and its checklist. Before proceeding with this video, it would be better if you can watch the 30% model review video uh, from the above link. We have covered different stages, requirement, objectives, documents, responsibilities and checklist for that stage. Our next video will be on 90% model review. We will share the links to both the videos in the description box below. So without wasting any time, let's get started. 60% model review is one of the reviews planned in all the EPC projects execution at different stages, 30, 60 and 90% of design completion. 60% 3D model review is an intermediate review that takes place when the, takes place when the final steel structure, final equipment, and the majority of the major pipe runs, ductwork, instrument and electrical trays have been modeled. Uh, the primary purpose of these reviews is to review the routing of all lines greater than 2 inches to ensure that process integrity has not been compromised and that the pipe, ductwork and tray runs are as per the minimum criteria established for the project to review the constructability of the plant. 60% model review is to check the operational, accessible and maintenance requirements. It is to observe any potential interference or clash in the 3D model. After a 60% model review, piping may issue IFC isometrics of pipe rack. Piping release, pipe rack loading and preliminary pipe support loads. Civil can release their foundation drawings for pipe rack as IFC. Final nozzle orientation and elevation shall be issued after 60% model review. We shall expect to receive final vendor drawings for equipments, control walls, specialty items, etc. The supporting documents required for the 60% model review are as follows. Plot plan issued for design, PNID where line size is given for all critical lines, equipment layout showing all the equipment and their primary location, piping spec, Stress analysis of all critical lines to finalize pipe support type, location and loop location. Pipe supports for critical and big board lines. Final or preliminary vendor drawings of equipments. Final or preliminary vendor drawings for instruments. Preliminary or final data of walls and specialty items if available. All the layouts governing the main steel structure. Final mechanical handling study and report based on volumes that should be modeled. Safety study based on the escape route excess volume and some additional safety volumes shall be modeled. Vent study for all open to atmosphere vents. Final firefighting layout. IFC UG layout and facilities. If it is an expansion plan, then existing facility drawings and ties drawings if its model is not available. Now let's talk about model review responsibility. Same as 30% model review, the piping engineer and the project engineer are the primary organizers of the model review. The piping lead shows the plant through a walkthrough of the complete plant. All comments are recorded in the proper project format for resolution and incorporation. Any necessary changes and comments are agreed upon and immediately recorded and marked with reference numbers and model pictures to allow follow-up and avoid misunderstanding. Role of the project engineer and piping engineer is the same as 30% model review except for the following points. Piping engineer shows each line above 2 inches as per PNID, shows the exclusion of 30% model review and present the inclusion and exclusion of 60% model review which are agreed upon with the project manager. Process engineer's role is to review each line as per the available PNID along with each stated note on PNID and check whether the process requirement has been followed or not while routing. This may sometimes change the layout if the process requirement is not fulfilled. To encounter the change post 60% model review, the project engineer shall plan an internal model review along with all the disciplines to check the integrity of the model. Now let's look upon the checkpoints of 60% model review. All the checkpoints of the 30% model review are also applicable to the 60% model review. And additional are as follows. Check process has of review comments which are open and critical. Review whether the tags of 30% model review are closed. 
All underground piping systems including pressurized and gravity lines along with the drainage systems are modeled and checked and interface with the above ground shall be reviewed. All the piping having size 2 inches and above is modeled and checked. As per the latest PNID, all line numbers, line sizes, pipe class and flow direction are checked. All tags for equipment, valve, SP item and instrument are checked as per PNID. All inline and online offline components are located and the sequence of branch connection is as per PNIDs. The special requirements such as slope, no pocket, removable spool, etc. and design related PNID notes are taken care of and insulation type and limit or extent are correctly specified. Equipment modeled as per the latest vendor drawings. Packages modeled as boxes and ask the vendor to share a compatible 3D file which shall be revised during the model and comments or tags shall be shared with the vendor if any. Final location of all equipments and their orientation along with all nozzles, manholes and associated ladders and platforms. Final nozzle orientation shall be issued to the vendor for fabrication. Pipe support locations and types are correct. Supports for stress critical systems shall be based on stress analysis calculations. Utility stations, eye wash and safety shower locations are shown by a volume box and the locations are checked. Foam powder and water spray systems are modeled and checked. Access and egress, operation and maintenance of walls and instruments are checked. The model is updated as per the vendor drawing of the packages. All mechanical handling equipment like cranes, monorails, davits, iPads, EOT etc. are modeled and checked. All structural steels, for example, pipe racks, technological structures, shelters, platforms, staircases, and ladders, pipe supports designed by civil etc. are modeled as civil design and checked. All foundations are modeled and checked. All buildings are modeled and checked. All instrument items like junction boxes, panels, cabinets and SIV vessel inclusive of supports are modeled and checked. All electrical items like junction boxes, panels, cabinets, lighting poles, floodlights, masts, etc. inclusive of supports are modeled and checked. All telecom items like junction boxes, panels, cabinets, CCTVs, PAGA, speakers, telecom towers, etc. are modeled and checked. All above ground cable tray routing is modeled and checked. An outline of drops to equipments or all users is shown in the model. All underground cable trenches are modeled and checked. Analyzer shelters are modeled and checked. Where applicable passive fireproofing is incorporated into the model. Construction access is checked. Ensure the hydro test vents and drains are provided for all lines that will be hydro tested. The electrical tracing and limit or extent is shown if applicable. The requirement of symmetrical piping and minimum piping is properly taken care of as per process requirement if applicable, especially for air cooler piping. The straight length requirement for suction and discharge of pumps or compressors, if any, is checked. The length and number of elbows on the suction line between the tank or vessel and pump should be minimum. Pockets may be avoided if possible. All the vapor lines branch off from the top of the main line. All valves required for emergency operations are operable from grade. Lines are provided with a drain connection between two valves, especially when the second valve is a check valve. The hot lines which are near the operating platform or within the reach of the person are insulated for personal protection. The limits of the insulation modeled are checked. The routing of the flare header is free of any pocket and kept continuously sloping towards the knockout drum as per the process requirement. Ensure all vertical lines rising or dropping from rack to unit are maintained at same back of pipe from the rack. Arrangement of piping entering and leaving the plant are logically grouped at the battery limit. The PSV outlet lines are self-draining to flare header and ensure no pocket in PSV inlet lines. The personal excess or ingress paths are free from hazards posed by blowout panels, rupture discs and relief wall discharge stacks. Removable spool shall be of minimum length and shall not have any instrument, vents, 
drains and other tappings or connected pipings. The handling and removal of all walls, blinds, etc. for maintenance are reviewed with, with respect to arrangement and excess space. Ensure that the design has been done effectively to reduce the number of flanges required for internally lined piped and galvanized pipes greater than 2 inches. Platforms requirement for accessibility, operation and maintenance are taken care of. Floor size cutouts are provided on platform or floor openings for piping. All ladders are checked for side entry on vertical vessel or columns. Ensure there is no interference with adjacent lines or structure due to the expansion of piping in hot conditions. Open sewer pit is avoided near the hot oil or fluid pumps. The flat side up FSU eccentric reducer is used in the pump suction line to avoid pocket formation which may cause cavitation in the pump. Placement of walls in pipe rack have been, has been avoided. If unavoidable, they are to be provided with access. For routing of jacketed sulfur piping, a cross is used where the direction change is envisaged. Also, ensure proper space rodding from two directions. Ensure that the walls and instruments located in sulfur pits are safely accessible in case of fire or shutdown. Provision of tundish where the drain is to be collected from the open drain system is checked. Ensure that the discharge of process and hydrocarbon lines should not be laid to open it create, they should be connected to a closed drain system. Ensure the relief wall piping should be as short as possible when discharging into a closed system. The walls, pits, sumps, catch basins and trenches, culverts and any other pits are properly located and checked. The dike, paving curb walls, burned walls, and fire separation walls, etc., are properly located and checked. The elevation of equipment with relation to the NPSH requirement of pumps is checked. Check the distance of the snuffing steam, snuffing steam isolation wall for fired heaters. It is to be located 15 meter away from the heater. Elevation of underground drain drum and pit depth shall be reviewed. The adequate clearance availability for the maintenance and removal of rotors, shafts, internals, etc., including the installation of temporary rigging beams, hoists, chain falls, etc., should be checked. The bottom of monorails, hoists, EOT, hot hook elevation should not be lower than the usable openings of the roll up doors, forklift access aisles, etc. Projection of monorails should be a minimum of 1 meter outside the shelter or building for loading, unloading, dropout area if the same is outside the shelter. Adequate laydown areas are identified and located for use with cranes, gantries, and monorails. Access around the pumps is to be checked for obstruction due to hookup around the pump, like seal oil lines casing drains to closed drain network, etc. All cryogenic service wall stem are to be checked for the stem in a vertical position or at less than a 45 degree angle to vertical. The stem of gate walls and flare services should be horizontal. The control walls ESDV and PSV are modeled and checked as per vendor drawings along with the correct size and orientation of actuators. All inline online instrument connections are checked as per the instrument hookup drawings. The instrument orifice tapping orientation are checked as per the instrument standard as per the type of fluid, for example, gas or liquid. The upstream downstream straight length requirement for the orifice is checked as per instruments or vendor requirement. The suction of the air blower of buildings and the inlet of HVAC is taken from a non hazardous area. In case of ultrasonic flow meter is used, then the adequacy of space available around the flow meter is checked for installation of the flow meter sensor so that it does not touch the adjacent line. Electrical instrumentation and telecommunication JB locations are checked so that they are not obstructing the walkway. Sample cabinet and coolers are properly located and checked wherever applicable. The electrical power generation package is shown as a block wherever applicable. Electrical transformers as a block are shown. The bus duct between generator and the switchboard is shown. Electrical panels, junction boxes and push button stations are shown and checked. 
इंस्ट्रूमेंट मेन एंड ब्रांच केबल ट्रेस ऑफ वन फिफ्टी एम एम एंड अब अलॉन्ग विद ट्रेंचेज जंक्शन बॉक्सेज ट्रांसमीटर बॉक्सेज एक्सेट्रा आर लोकेटेड शोन इन चेक द अप्रोप्रिएट सेकेंडरी सपोर्ट्स आर प्रोवाइडेड एंड द स्पैन इज चेक एज पर द सपोर्ट स्पेसिफिकेशन द रूटिंग ऑफ टू फेज लाइन आर टू बी विदाउट पॉकेट्स टू मैक्सिम एक्सटेंट पॉसिबल ऑल्सो इंश्योर प्रॉपर सपोर्ट ऑफ दीज लाइन्स ensure that the correct type of primary supports are selected like clamp type shoes shall be used for stainless steel alloy steel and galvanized pipe adequate support was provided for all control valve stations spring supports are modeled and checked small bore branches with long runs are checked with proper supporting and requirements of stiffeners at branch of locations so that is it guys for today's video we love reading your comment and suggestions so please comment below we do read every single one of your comment if you like this video please hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues who may find it useful if you have any time please check out our other videos over there